Bloodless Innocent, from my perspective, is looking at any alternatives that can be used. Some people have religious reasons that they don't want blood products given. Other people aren't comfortable with having products given that might have a high risk of complications. There is evidence that suggests the less blood, or in, the, in this case, bloodless, no blood, is actually better for the patient. More and more studies are showing that um, getting a blood transfusion is a much more serious event than we may have once considered. I think it's always better to avoid a blood transfusion unless absolutely necessary. Ultimately, I think it's also about respecting the patient's religious wishes and having an open conversation, getting to really know your patient at a deep level. It's just a, a total approach to the person's care, whether it's in the surgical setting or medical setting. Uh, just designed to take alternative steps to avoid the use of blood products. If somebody has a religious belief whereby they do not want someone else's blood, then we can work around that, work with them, and offer them this practice. I think what's important to point out is, is that this isn't just a single event. When a patient comes to MedStar Franklin Square to take advantage of our bloodless medicine program, one of the things we, we emphasize is, is that the care actually begins before that day of surgery. There's a whole department at the hospital, very well respected, that's devoted to bloodless medicine. So we'd like to go over some um, available options as a primary. There's tremendous resources available for them for counseling. Albumin, clotting factors. And that we're enthusiastic about providing care so that everyone knows the services are available. We start from the beginning we meet the patient. We assess what their blood count is. And your blood count is uh, lower than normal. Because there are treatments that we can do medically to increase a patient's blood count prior to surgery. We found that anybody that is interested in the program, we, we can get them information relatively quickly. And we're more than happy to work with a patient um, for their needs and their wants. I wanted to come by and say hello. We have coordinators for this program. We have a chief of surgery who's been an advocate for bloodless surgery and this program for some time. And there are others of us who have embraced that concept. What's interesting is in the last couple of years, it really has become clear how important it is to limit blood transfusions. I think that the principles that you work on with someone who is interested in bloodless medicine are very applicable to just medicine in general, just taking care of patients. Because no patient would like a blood transfusion, whether their objection is religious or just out of concern for rare complication with blood transfusion. It is better medicine. It takes um, some thought, it takes some planning, but it, there's obvious advantages to it. Okay. So using all those fundamental principles, that have been applied to bloodless medicine and surgery is now being applied to a much wider population of people that realize. I mean, physicians understand this is, a better, this is a better standard of care. If you can avoid transfusion, your patient will do better. There'll be less infections. The length of stay in the hospital is lower. So there's a, there's a multitude of reasons why this is a better approach. And so now we've moved from this smaller community, subset of community, to where these principles are applied to a much broader population. And it's, it's to everybody's benefit.